Good morning from South Boston. Today we are going to explore most of Boston that we can in a day and a half and it's gonna be fun. We have a full agenda. We're gonna go from South Boston to downtown as we delve into the city's rich history and also some of its diverse parts. Additionally, we're gonna find a lot of the delicious cuisine here. So you best believe we're gonna go and find some delicacies. Now it's time to start our adventure. This morning, we're starting off at Castle Island, home of Fort Independence. And Castle Island was built in 1643 as a fort against British armies. It almost makes me wish I had paid more attention in history class so I can explain some of those things, but I didn't. Okay, I lied, I do know some facts. First is they're on the hill, which to my knowledge, the high ground's good and it's next to the water. So having the high ground, they can see when other ships come here and just have a general understanding of what's going on around them. My, so boom, facts spit. My history buff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the basic facts of fort building. <laughs> you got it from fort, mate. <laughs> so we're not going to complete the 45 minute loop, but as you can see, it goes all the way around. It's really windy out and there's a lot of planes. Another thing about this place is that you can see all like the islands around the harbor, which are cool to see. And maybe when we come back one day, we'll take a boat and go island hopping in the Boston Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty fun. But for now, we look at a distance. Castle Island definitely gets a thumbs up from us. Mm -hmm. But now we're heading back to our Airbnb so we can go check out. And then we're going to go to a place called Lawn on the Beach. We made it back, and now it's time to redo this hair. <laughs> Woo She's wild. <laughs> we're 20 pounds heavier, I have my new hairstyle, and now we're on our way to downtown. But first, a stop at Lawn on the D. Which way is more comfortable? The other way. Oh yeah, this is not comfortable. <laughs> like, if I was relaxing, I wouldn't want to do this. Well, maybe. Whee. My pickup speed, Brandon's gaining momentum. Be responsible. <laughs> I would say Lawn on the D, slightly underwhelming, but also it's only 10 o'clock in the morning and they do have like a little bar and like they play live music. So I feel like if we came like three hours later, it'd probably be a happy place. Honestly, we did have a lot of fun while we were here, so yeah. maybe it's not underrated. I know you're gonna see it underwhelming. I was gonna say it. that was a lot of fun. <laughs> I had a blast because it's not popping. We basically had the place to ourselves and just got that fun and wasn't like loud or crowded. True. And so I think I was expecting more circle swings. <laughs> they might be under construction. True. But Lawn of the D was a lot of fun. I got to beat Becky not once but twice, mm. and I get to rub it in bragging rights. I'm a sore winner. Okay, so I'm kidding. <laughs> nope. <laughs> now it's actually time to find. So unfortunately, we didn't get a Boston cream pie because they didn't have any where they sold out. I don't really know, but we did get an apple cinnamon pop tart. When I think of pop tarts, I don't think of this, and so I had to try it out. Guilty. Hmm. Not what I was expecting. This is the spot. And now we're going to go to Vampire Park and take a look around and see a really good view of Boston. Walking through Boston has been a lot of fun so far. Go to somewhere across like the cutest little areas, like the one we just walked through. Honestly, I think walking is one of my favorite like, activities to do on vacation because you just like see so much and there's so many mm -hmm. cute shops. And now I see some water in, right ahead of us. So we're about to be at that pier. Check it out. Yeah, what a good view. Dude, it's a great view. This viewpoint top notch for the views of boston and there's like not a ton of people on this walking trail so mm -hmm. it's just like a really nice paved walking trail you can see the cityscape mm -hmm. right next to the harbor it's really cool it really is especially there's probably some historic significance i don't fully know but it's <laughs> great to be in a famous area and there's just something about seeing a city skyline that's always appealing Agreed. And there's some nice like sculptures throughout the path too. Mm -hmm. Just a really nice enjoyable park. Relaxing. Take a nice little stroll, drink some coffee and a snack. Mm -hmm. mm. 
great morning, <laughs> afternoon, evening activity. That's where you can throw tea into the harbor. <laughs> because we didn't get reservation, we're gonna role play our own version. All right, ready? Yeah. Are we happy that they taxed our team? No! Are you happy that they taxed our stamps? No! Are you happy that they're quartering soldiers? No! No taxation without representation! This no. is outrageous! Let's throw some time! Yeah! <laughs> That's how I imagined it happened. <laughs> that was worth it. How much money did we save? <laughs> like 60 bucks. <laughs> But that's where you throw the tea in. I know. If you do do it. That was one fun. Was I close? <laughs> Nailed it. Oh. Nailed it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nailed, Nailed it. it. <laughs> <laughs> We're awful. Preposterous. <laughs> Take that, you British boo. Cute little room. We made it to the Quarters Club Hotel. And we have a beautiful bed, a little coffee area, bathroom, mirror, looking good. So we're gonna unpack and get our day bag ready so we're a little bit lighter and keep exploring Boston. All right, we are recharged physically and literally with our phone batteries. So we are ready to rumble. And it's just so awesome that we're like in downtown Boston because everything's like a seven minute walk instead of 20 and we got this hotel for like free through one of our credit card credits so it just gives us a nice feeling of like free 99 and you'll never believe where we're going next and now we're at the original place that the boston cream pie was made the parker house and so we got our Boston cream pie! The original Boston cream pie recipe. Let's see how it tastes. We're trying Boston cream pie for the first time from the Parker House who created the Boston cream pie. Mmm. That chocolate ganache layer. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So after getting the Boston cream pie from the Parker House, we took the train and now we're in the Back Bay area. And it has been highly recommended that we check out the Boston Library from friends and from the internet. So we're going to go check that out and then make our way back east on the Freedom Trail. Public library, super cool. 10 out of 10. They this like awesome courtyard. It looked like a really great place to study, just get work done or relax, read, whatever you fancy. And they had a gallery that was all about like the public like transportation in Boston. It was really cool to see like the history of it too. And I found out that Boston was established in 1630. So Honestly. might as well be a historian. Check it out. No. <laughs> How fun, we just stumbled across this Newberry Street. We're gonna check it out. Well, that market was a nice surprise. It was. I liked all the street performers and the kids selling cider and all the little booths. It was so cool. And now we're heading to the Boston Commons, <laughs> right? Yes. Well, first we're walking through the com. So we're at the Commonwealth Avenue Mall. So we're gonna walk on this and there's like different historical bill or monuments there, which will then connect to the public gardens and we'll check out the public gardens. Lots of nature here. I love it. We just arrived at the 
Republic Garden. It's basically like a smaller Central Park in New York City, so it's a really cool vibe. Everyone's out just enjoying the good weather, mm -hmm. sitting, eating, playing. It's a really cool spot. We're gonna enjoy the park and then make our way to the start of the Freedom Trail that's in Boston Commons. The cool thing about the Freedom Trail is there are 16 stops and we're actually only gonna do eight today and we'll do the other eight tomorrow. But at the A stop, it's actually a place called Quincy Market where we're gonna get our dinner. Yes. And the first spot is Boston Commons, which I just learned is the oldest public park in America. Wait, really? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that we don't know <laughs> and originate in Massachusetts. And this is the second stop on the Freedom Trail, which is the Massachusetts State House, which was built in 1798 and is the oldest building on Beacon Hill. It's pretty cool looking. Stop number three, Park Street Church. It was known for storing gunpowder for the War of 1812. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Wow, yeah. wow, I would not expect that in a church. Say cheese for stop number three. Cheese! Did I get it? Yeah, you got a street lamp. Ah. <laughs> stop number four, Granary Burial Grounds. And in here are a lot of famous Boston people like John Hancock, Samuel Adams, all five of the Boston Massacre victims, which I'm very curious to see, and Ben Franklin's parents. So we're going to check it out and see our way around the park. Stop number five, the King's Church, which was the first Anglican church built in 1686. Wow, she's old. Stop number six, the Boston Latin School, which was the first public school in the U.S. And it's fitting because you're a teacher. <laughs> Stop number seven is Chipotle. Just kidding. It's the old corner bookstore that was the home of Anne Hutchinson, who was banned from Massachusetts for her religious beliefs. And then they published famous works by Hathor, Harriet Beecher Stowe, and other authors. I just think it's kind of funny it's a Chipotle now. <laughs> <laughs> Stop number eight, the Old South Meeting House, which is the second oldest church in Boston, and it's where all the angry crowds would go and have like protests about the British. Arg. Stop number... <laughs> Stop number nine, is the old state house which is the oldest public building in boston and it's where they read the declaration of independence in 1776 which is kind of wild yeah the old state house the 10th stop is the gold circle that represents the boston massacre where the colonists and the British really got into it and five colonists died and made people really upset. Stop number 11, Finoli Hall, which is where they would hold all these big public meetings and where they would throw their anger about Boston and have arguments and debates. Well, stop number 11 is going to be great to stop at Quincy Market and grab some dinner. That's right. And Quincy Market is this really cool open market where they have like food stalls and they also have like craft vendors and just different little booths. So we're going to check it out. This is the Bostonia, but we're going to have another New England dinner. These are really good things. <laughs> are they? Yeah. Like, they're really sweet, but they also taste like pork at the same time. Like, bacon. Bostonian baked beans? I'm going to get two thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> With the fork and a spoon. Dinner was spectacular. Fish and chips was great. The baked beans, which I don't even know white, were really good. And the clam chowder. Well done, Boston. Everything tasted amazing, but now we are off to go hopefully finish the rest of the Freedom Trail.
we're back on the Freedom Trail and it's taking us to the north end. So we're going to be able to explore a little Italy too before we make it to stop number 12. We couldn't walk through Little Italy and not stop and get some pastries. This is from Modern's and there's a big beef between Mike and Modern's pastry. So maybe tomorrow we'll go try out Mike. But today we try Modern. We're gonna try the Napoleon first. I think there's graham cracker. Mmm, that's really good. It's like vanilla pudding with like layers of croissant pastry puff. It's so good. That's some pretty good canola, yeah. You know? like that. It's creamy. It's crunchy. What more could you want from a cannoli? So after dinner, after getting back on the Freedom Trail and finding cannolis, we got to our 12th stop, the Paul Revere House. And Paul Revere was most famously known for the midnight ride. Tooth by sea, one of my lambs. Anyways, he rode his horses to let us know the British were coming. So we're at his house. And this is the only spot in Boston that is the house of someone who has been with the Revolutionary War. Would you say it's fitting that we're here at the nighttime? Yeah, his house, his house is really dark. Oh, I get it, because he had the midnight ride. <laughs> that does make sense. <laughs> Good one, Brandon. Mama Y'all, Boston at night is so much fun. When we started the Freedom Trail, I did not think it would lead us into the dark. Everything's like beautifully lit and you can just get to see stuff with sort of a new lighting. So it just adds an extra element. Hmm. I love exploring the city with you at night. <laughs> <laughs> this I know. is fun, you know? We're just seeing all these new things, and I think we're almost to our 13th spot. I wonder what it's gonna be. I do. It's the old North Church where Paul Revere put up the two lanterns to let them know they're coming. So, the old church steeple is super important. Stop number 14 is Coop Burial Ground, which is the largest colonial burial ground in Boston. So it's closed right now, and I think a lot of the other places, or the next two stops are also closed. So I think we're gonna break away from the Freedom Trail and come back to it tomorrow during the daytime. Although we have two more stops left, I'm super bummed we won't be able to finish the Freedom Trail, but Alternatively, we're gonna go walk to Harvard during the night time and get some night shots of the city. We'll be back here tomorrow because a lot of the places were closed and so we just wanna see them in its full. And so we're going to keep exploring the rest of the night, but we'll be back here first thing tomorrow morning. Good morning. We are on to our last half of exploring Boston today and we are gonna finish up the Freedom Trail, but first we're gonna go get coffee at the first Italian cafe. All right, our journey to the Freedom Trail again has had several detours. One, the public market just popped out real cool. Had a delicious bagel. Stop two, coffee at the first Italian cafe in Boston. And then right next door, it was Mike's Pastries, one of the most famous pastry places in Boston. So we had to get some tiramisu, even though we said we couldn't do any more sweets. But tiramisu, hmm. But one of the cool things about each of the places we went to is they all had like a cute and unique inside area mm -hmm. and it just had like its own charm pretty much agreed little italy's pretty cute bring some cash <laughs> <laughs> so these blue and white boxes are super iconic and we've seen them everywhere since we've been in boston first bite of the tiramisu cake i love tiramisu and i'm on a mission wherever i go to always find the perfect bite that does not disappoint the espresso flavor is perfect the cheese is thick and creamy. The lady fingers are delicious. I am super happy that we went with this dessert for our morning routine. Stop number 14, Cops Burying Ground, which is the largest colonial burying ground in Boston. And some gravestones date back to 1659. That is old. So back in the day, different like silversmiths would have like different 
heads on their nails so that they that way they would know who like purchased these nails from and just like different gravestone carvers they would carve different symbols in to know like I made this gravestone. It's like a calling card for all the different gravestone makers, carvers. Wow. So it would be like, oh, Tony made that one. Oh, Johnny made that one. Because <laughs> I remember like back in the day, like if you went into a shop and the nail head looked a certain way, people would like leave because they didn't support that like silversmith. Wow. <laughs> Olden day drama. <laughs> True. Now it's just on Twitter and Facebook. <laughs> Aren't they cool? But I figured out with the willow and there's a urn. Okay, you ready for some facts? Yes. A prominent image used in the late 18th and early 19th century gravestones was the willow in the urn motif. And the willow was an ancient mourning symbol. Okay. And the urn was an imperial Roman device used to contain the ashes, which, you know, we still use urns today for ashes. And it was a trend. So a lot of these are like trends of how they viewed death throughout like the years of centuries. And so because that was, it was moved more towards like mourning, like the loss of a loved one. Hmm. Pretty cool. A Boston Tea Party Wow, that's so cool that they're able to like find these spots and like link it back to like these things in history. The Tea Party participants are probably like what, maybe 50 people tops that participated in the Tea Party and they're able to find it. Wow, honestly, that was one of my favorite stops. Maybe it was just because I was reading and learning about it too, but it's just really cool to take some time to look at them and learn about what all the gravestones man. And I'm really glad that we decided to pause last night so we could resume because we just wouldn't have gotten that experience because it was closed. True. And we probably, I don't know if we would have came back, but I'm glad that we came back today because like you said, and it's interesting to say that visiting one of the cemeteries or burying ground might be one of our favorite stops on the trail. In a weird way, it was pretty cool. Like a favorite spot because of the history that's yes. there. You know, a favorite spot because of like the traditions that are on the gravestones and just like the the history and the knowledge that's there. Mm -hmm. The Freedom Trail is a great way just to see the city. Like it takes you through like a lot of places we already went to mm -hmm. on our own. So I highly recommend just a great way to see the city and taste the city. Wow, that's a good view of the city. <laughs> Harborview Park is a great detour to get this view. Stop number 15, Bunker Hill, which was the bloodiest battle in the Revolutionary War. And it's for that famous saying, don't shoot till you see the whites of their eyes. So we're about to go check it out. Stop number 16 is the USS Constitution, which is the oldest warship in the world still afloat. And it's got its name for the iron side. In the War of 1812, the British would shoot cannons at it and it looked like the cannonballs would just like bounce off the walls. Like, ah, it's made of iron. We thought the ferry was a three minute walk. Now it says it's an eight minute walk. So we made it here and the ferry doesn't arrive for another 10 minutes. I would say one and a half days, not quite enough time to see Boston. Mm -hmm. I would love to come back here. It's a really cool city. Yeah. And we don't say that about a lot of big cities that we've been to, especially in the U.S. But Boston, for some reason, has a special place in our hearts. At least for me, it does. Yeah, it's a cool spot. But the ferry is going to be really cool because you see the views behind us. We're going to get that by from the water. ferry ride across the river. Pretty cool. It's fun. It's 
370 a person for a one-way ticket and it's about 10 minute ride there's snacks on board too that you can buy so if you want a pop tart you can get a ferry ride get a pop tart sit back and enjoy <laughs> but now we are going to head back to the hotel room then we got to go to the airport and do all that stuff and so thank you so much for watching and hopefully y'all like boston as much as we did but see you in the next one come visit boston Sugar! Bummer! <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> Alright, and this is the Paul Revere Park, which is another thing about this trail is it takes you through all these like little city parks, which is always fun to stop and explore, especially if you get a treat and stop and eat. Who's that? Who's that?